Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We have, of course, got one more game to go tonight here for APAC South. It's been a, an amazing night to really kickstart the season. We had 7th Heaven, who, of course, caused a bit of a stir. And then, as we just saw, Wildcard completely undone by Q Confirm. SEA 2, OCE 0. No more OCE teams, though, on the broadcast tonight, guys. We move on to Giants versus Xavier and Raven. This is the match of the day. Look, very excited about this match. This is a very hard fought little uh, battle that we've had before. Rich history between these two teams, in fact. They've played both BO3s in the recent majors, and of those, they were played 80 rounds. Uh, it's a lot of rounds to be played between six maps. So, close affairs recently, and it's really hard to say how the things have changed. You know, the meta has developed a lot since 2020. Yeah, thanks for stealing everything I was going to say, Raven. That's fine. You're no, welcome. these two teams, look, I, I would go as far to say that these two teams uh, will... I'm going to make the bold suggestion now. They're going to finish first and second. So this game right now is going to be incredibly important in the grand scheme of the entire season. And uh, I know both of these teams are looking to kind of bite at the bit to, to get involved. So really, really curious to see what Xavier have kind of tucked away in the pocket. Is that a bold prediction though? I don't think it really is. I think that's probably the smart prediction that these two teams may very well be one and two by the end of the season. I mean, Raven, you would probably have to agree with that sentiment. Yeah, I'm pretty confident they will end up being one and two. They're both very strong teams in Southeast mm. Asia and they proved that strength in APAC course last season, which also has its fair share of strong teams. So the fact that they are able to go toe to toe and bring it up, sure is uh the titans of apex south i'm quite confident that yeah i'm not i'm not dismissing or, or really i'm not even going to go against the grain there giants are really on a on another level here for uh the the apex south and and it's definitely the leading team for me and i'm sure for many at home like you said it's probably not as bold uh, as what I would like to, to make my outlandish claims. But this roster is just wreaking havoc. And I think coming into uh, APAC South, there is no question in my mind that they're just going to back this up. And, uh, you know, like the, the names there that I have been watching since I first stepped into Siege and have continuously time and time again stepped up, you know, I also like Luna Metal. Like, you can... <laughs> I love Lunar Metal, man. Such a such a great personality to, to have in, in Siege for us. Well, before we segue to their opponents, I want your thoughts as well on this Giants roster, Raven, and, and where they sort of stack up. Yeah, look, I mean, it's hard to talk about Giants without talking about the duo of Hysterics and Speakeasy. Mm. Incredible players, mechanically, and just their, their IQ is way up there, and they are really dangerous so Xavier they're gonna have to try and shut down those guys to have any chance and that's the same for any opponents of Giants really they need to be able to reduce the fragging power of those two in particular and that's not to say the rest of the team can't frag out they certainly can but Hysterics yeah. and Speakeasy very prolific well let's segue right over to their opponents it's of course Xavier Esports and as I segue over to them I'm gonna go straight back to you Raven bam double fire double tap <laughs> give us your thoughts on their opponents here well, again, you want to talk about prolific fraggers in APAC on Agiri. Man, I have seen so many highlights of this guy. He really is a standout player for Xavier, but their roster just has something special about the way they gel together. It comes down to their playstyle. It can be quite unpredictable and really aggressive and hard to shut down. So I just think on top of the, the fact that Agiri is just so up there in his skills, the way these guys come together is what makes Xavier a dangerous roster. Hmm. I think, you know, just once again, backing on that statement, Napier as well, I I rate so highly as a player. And I think this is going to be a very tightly contested game. This roster here can do some serious damage to, uh, to Jens. And I, I have no question, absolutely no question, that Napier can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a player like Speakeasy uh, or like like you said, you know, the, it, it just reiterating my point of, of these two teams and, and how tightly contested the past couple of games have been. And I mean, 80 rounds played in six maps. 
regulation goes to 72 rounds in six maps. So we're talking incredibly tight matches pushed to OT continuously. Let's of course look at the map that they are going to be playing on here for this best of one. This final map of the day. It doesn't feel like it's been a long day. It's gone by pretty quick, as quick as the maps do come out. And boy, are we in for a banger. We go back to Chalet, boys, and, and really spices it up, Raven. It does. And look, I was just quickly looking at the band stats for these maps, and I was like, surely this goes to Chalet. I feel like it's the best even ground for these two to battle out the yeah. start of Apex South. And here we are. So. That throws a lot out the window, you know, like we can't really draw a whole lot from previous results. Chalet is a, a whole new map to the map pool. It's been a little bit likened by Guz earlier to Coastline, but it's still not quite the openness of Coastline. So I think this is going to be a very exciting matchup, given that it's going to Chalet. I think it does enable a bit of Xavier's playstyle as an unpredictable aggression and kind of come out of nowhere in many places in Chalet. Hmm. Yeah. I I think the uh, the game we saw with Knights and Elevate definitely lent into a roam heavy uh, kind of opportunity. And like you're saying, Raven, for for a team like Xavier that is unpredictable, is aggressive, and is happy to take those early engagements, I think Chalet sits in their back pocket. So I am uh, I don't know who I've actually gone for, but I, I'm probably looking toward that uh, maybe being a determining factor in how Giants uh, seem fit to deal with Xavier. I'm pretty certain that you've gone with Xavier, actually. I believe it was yourself and Guz. Uh, so doing the work there for you. Uh, Manic Monday, as always. Uh, final <laughs> thoughts and predictions as we close out this pre-game. Raven, uh, are you on the Giants bandwagon still, even going into Chalet, or has that potentially changed your mind a bit? Oh, look, I I'm still on the Giants bandwagon. Um, besides the fact that I love those guys and support them a lot, I just think that their, their preparation is solid so coming into this i have no doubt they've probably practiced chalet quite a lot and got a level of comfort i feel like that's going to give them the edge robert well all i'm going to say is chalet is showed that things can get a little bit interesting it can get spicy and get heated i am going with xavier i'm going to back that up and i'm going to stay true mm. to that prediction i feel that this is going to lean into xavier's play style well, I uh, myself feel like Giants should be able to still have too much, I think, for Xavier and to take it out here on Chalet. But I also believe it's going to be a cracker. We're going to throw it over to our two favorite resident casters. It's Dev, it's Guz. Are we the favorites? I had no idea. I'm, thank you, Zenox. Pleasantly surprised to hear that, Guz. We're back in for another one. It is the match of the day. And guess what? It's on Chalet. Uh, that was an accidental rhyme, but I'm keen as I am actually going to agree with Rob here for once. Who'd have thought? I reckon Chalet is a map that's actually going to... It's going to move into Xavier's playstyle in this case. That aggression, I think that's going to come to fruition here. Yeah, I'm feeling super blessed to cast this match. I feel like this could be one of the best matches of the entire first stage. So let's get into it. It's the neutral territory of Chalet. And as you said, Xavier will be looking to bring the heat against the Giants. Chalet, here we go. It is the rework, the second time tonight. We're going to see it. And it is Giants versus Xavier, one of the oldest rivalries that we have dating back to the Southeast Asian Pro League. That rivalry continued through the APAC North Division where these teams continuously fought neck and neck. Xavier were known as the Giant Killers for the upsets they managed and for always pushing Giants to overtime and to that final line of defense. Let's see how this inaugural match in APAC South for them does go. Ace off the board first here from Xavier, not wanting to deal with that on the defense. We'll see what the Giants follow it up with. Likely a Thatcher, but no, it'll instead be the Maverick. So we're finally going to see some Thatcher pay potentially here on Chalet, and I think that's going to open up the map even more. Sure, there's two hard breaches taken down, but you still have the Habana and the Thermite. So I don't think there'll be too many issues in getting walls open when desired. Keen to see what the defensive bands will be. Critical one for the Giants, of course. They start out on the attack. It's actually going to be the one my taken off. So, right. wow. I think off the board, Dev, we can say that if Chalet was already going to be super aggressive, now it's going to be super duper aggressive. There you go. That Malusi means it's well, with no ban, she is 
as an attacking squad, you're going to have a lot easier of a time just executing on the site, taking those aggressive plays and really swinging in. Now, the well, my ban's not super surprising to me because it's the most banned defensive operator for both of these teams. But I'm surprised not to see the Nomad ban come from Xavier. That ace is a bit left the field for me. Does mean Nomad is in, and you can see Hysterics just lock straight into that. I think that's a great play. You've talked about that aggression. Chalet is all about the roam and the anti-roam, and that Nomad really is going to shut down some of that aggression. And look at that. The Clash teased out for a second there, but the six pick comes through, and Napier goes over to Valkyrie. Yeah, I guess expanding on that point, I think my early impressions of this map is that rotations for the defense are almost top priority. You want to be able to expand your control of the map, but it can be very dangerous to rotate. The fireplace stairs are super exposed. Library stairs are super exposed for a lot of long angles. Then, of course, you've got Solarium down to Trophy. There's the outside window, and again, more angles that can be made from West Main. So having that Nomad will only make that even more hard for the defense to rotate around. That said, we are heading to bedroom first. I believe this is probably the objective we'll see the least roaming. But we have seen it already tonight in the likes of Solarium Trophy, even all the way over towards Library. And the fact that Xavier on the defense, uh, that Xavier are on the defense, I mean, they could do anything. They could probably have a four-man roam for all I know. So we'll have to wait and see. Castle being brought as well. So I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Nothing too crazy from Xavier in terms of the... Oh, oh I was going to say the unusual aggression, but there you go. A spawn peak from Angry X, the newest player on the roster. Big shoes to fill, filling in for Red Sun, the former captain of this roster, but he does great work taking down Ysera. Already put Xavier into the advantage in the first couple seconds of the round. And that's not even regarding this beautiful little castle extension straight at the top of Library Stairs. Another run out! Welcome <laughs> to Thailand, says Napier as he takes down the top-rated player of APAC North 2020. And we stress the importance of that Nomad, but no air jabs. We'll be placed around the map and the defense. We had to roam around even more confidently in combination with that man advantage. I mean, I wouldn't even put it past the player to just jump out Solarium and get this player <laughs> on the drone at this point because that is just Xavier. But maybe they'll just tame it a little bit here, reel it in. They've still got two minutes that they need to hold out for, and there's no point turning it back to a three on four, which they do. Speak Easy finds one onto DCH. So Giants still in with a the chance. They just need to try and find maybe one more pick that isn't traded here by the defense. While Xavier are a very aggressive team, they're also a smart team. They know when not to peek. That's just as important as knowing when to peek. Ooh, unfortunate timing there for Angry X. That Luna is taken down on Akiri there to support. Great crossfire from those two Xavier players. Angry X flashed out. Oh. He pushes back. Jordan not able to secure that kill. Now he's in a one versus four. Now, impossible now for the Giants to come back this round. Xavier have already made a statement. Wow. Big first round here from Xavier. Looking unlikely that the Giants will get themselves back into this one. Those two spawn peaks at the start. Huge. Yazira in hysterics, not even being able to set foot inside of Chalet. It's hectic when you're inside, but when you're playing against Xavier, it's also hectic on the exterior. And as Jordan tries to make his way up the stairs, he'll be shut down Napu to find the final kill. Rocking that very good looking new seasonal skin, I must say. <laughs> and I uh, don't know what that flick was, but uh, the shot was clean. Ah, <laughs> oh, Xavier are just absolutely cracked. One of the most mechanically <laughs> skilled rosters you will see in the entire world, hands down. I don't think that should even be debatable. And I was speaking a while back with Luna from Giants about Xavier and, and saying, how do you defeat this roster? And he says, well, their mentality when it comes to playing against Xavier, and of course, Giants, one of the most experienced teams at playing Xavier, the mentality is that, well, Xavier, they, they want to take their 1v1s. They love gunfights because they are so good at mechanical skill. That is their forte. So you don't give it to them. You try and set the team up into situations where you're not giving Xavier a fair Attackers fight. You're giving them an unfair spot. fight. Maybe they're caught in a crossfire. Maybe you're flashing them before you peek. Whatever it is, it's all about not taking 50-50 fights. Because as soon as you start to lean into those could-go-either-way gunfights, it's Xavier who's going to win it. 
But we didn't see yeah. that so far. I mean, it was Xavier who dictated <laughs> those first gunfights, right? Just jumping out and spawn peeking. Yeah. And I, mean, I get the impression that Shelly, at least early on in its lifespan, I, I feel like it's going to be hard for the Giants to avoid 1v1s. We saw it a lot in the first matchup of the evening um, between 7th Heaven okay, and Order, was it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Uh, okay. No, right. no, it was, it was Elevate. It was elevate, elevate, elevate Knights, yeah, yeah, my apologies. Yeah. yeah, we saw a lot of 1v1 battles in that, and it didn't really feel like yeah, either team was super intent bar. on taking those fights. It's just how the map sort of naturally played out. So if the Giants want to avoid that, well, I wish them all the best, because at least <laughs> that first round gave the impression that Xavier are definitely going to go to every resort possible to prevent that from happening. As much as we profile Xavier as this super aggro team, like, they, they have stress. I mean, look at this. Mira, Castle, Kaid, like, these are heavy utility operators that we're seeing brought to the table. And we're seeing the least favored bomb site chosen here by Xavier Kitchen, which I know a lot of teams have said is just utter rubbish. But um, Xavier <laughs> don't think so. They've got a lovely little mirror set up. They've made the top a little bit of a kill box. As you can see upstairs, a lot of angles pre-opened up. Not allowing Giants to just take control of the top floor willy-nilly. Actually, a mirror window as well, holding steps facing towards Piano for Sapper here as well. Yeah, I'm liking this utility investment from the defense. Keep in mind, the entire floor basically above this objective is wooden. It can be destroyed. A lot of angles can be generated, and that basically means that as the defense, you basically can't turtle in sight, no matter how hard you try. So I love the intent here to try and hold above they're trying to contest Solarium. Yazira's gonna go in for the Rapel. Makes it in. Default camera's up and spotted his position. He gets slipped up, but he will survive at least for a little bit longer as Giants try to work out how they're going to clear this player out. Sapper and Angry X to receive. C4 comes through, misses its mark. Blows anyway. Angry X for the wild spray. Just dancing with death, but Hysterics finds the first pick on Agiri! What Wait, was what? that? <laughs> you better be thankful! Oh no! The server seems to be falling to pieces. But thankfully for Xavier, they managed to claw it back. Hysterics jumps in downstairs, might find this 1v1. He does. A 2 versus 2, you make that a 2v1. Hysterics has gone huge. But Sapper has that diffuser. It's all on him to hold on. The SMG at this range will prove deadly. Vertholz as well, watching the bottom of the stairs, but. This lag not really serving anyone's favor, but it doesn't really matter. The teams need to play with it. And Sapper, he gets swung. Hysterics will take the round for his team. A little bit messy there in the mid round, but they managed to get the job done. Very, very messy, but yeah, they certainly got the job done at the end of the day, did Giants. Really thanks to Hysterics making some, uh, some impact plays when it matters. Sometimes you got to fight fire with fire. That worked for Giants just that time around. Let's either come back to us and have a look at our beautiful faces. While we sort out whatever on earth is going on there. But hey, it was... <laughs> it's been a, a, an exciting match so far, I would say. Yeah. Um, like I said, I feel like it's it's not quite at coastline levels, but it's getting pretty close. And when you put teams like Xavier in server on this map and just let them run wild, well... It's difficult to know what's going to happen. So, look, early days in this match, but some of the stuff we've seen is pretty cool. Sure, Xavier didn't win that last round on the kitchen defense, but as you highlighted, they had proper strats worked out. I don't think those mirrors were just made up on the day, right? Those have been tried and tested in scrims, and they must have had some success. Um, we even saw there before the pause that they actually flagged kitchen as their next site. So maybe they will do the same strat. They just figured they made a couple of mistakes in that last round that they can correct. Yeah, very cool strat. I really loved it. You've got mirror windows holding yourself from piano for the, the, I think it's the south side of the map push. And then from that solarium push, which is where you are most vulnerable, you've got the gear in there with an ADS and a lot of lines of sight opened up. And Xavier are happy to open up lines of sight because they're so confident in their gunfights. That's just another avenue. They don't necessarily need a mirror in order to peek around that. So I really thought that was cool. And I hope we get to see it again. Uh, it did end up just being a little bit of a frag fest from both sides. <laughs> uh, but hey, credit to, to Xavier. They have some clearly formed ideas in their head about how they want these things to look. And they've got some good strats for Chalet, even though it's only been in the pool for not very long at all. And yeah, the castle also supported that strat too. So really, really cool stuff. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess we can sort of think about what we're going to see in the future. I, I guess if we see, like I mentioned, that same side again, we could see a very similar setup. But from that point onwards, it's a little bit of an unknown. We haven't seen the basement side played out yet, which I would have personally expected to be the primary side, if not the secondary to the second floor. Um, so keen to see if Xavier have something formulated for that. Maybe we'll see something wild, like, like an extreme roam. I know some teams are probably considering trying to play quite heavy on that roam. Again, keeping in mind the two hard breach bands might make it more difficult for that um, snowmobile wall to get open so there's maybe not be as much of a threat on the breach rush so you can afford to play offside and play quite aggressive which so far will probably have to favor Xavier as mentioned they're very mechanically gifted and they can back themselves to win those ones yeah and if it does come down to that basement bomb site you're looking at Giants they only bring the thermites they only hard breach now I did manage to see whether the buck had the secondary hard breach charge but I'm gonna guess not I'm gonna brush guess he was bringing flashes uh, and that means that there's a bit of a limitation to the amount of hard breach giants has available. And once you start to think of how that gets applied, well, as soon as you're attacking that basement, you want to breach snowmobile, right? That's the number one thing you do. So you thermite that open. And then what's next? You usually want to rotate over to wine and start to open some walls there, but you can only choose the breach, like the elbow wall or the wall facing towards the car garage. You can't do both at the same time. Uh, if you've already used one thermite charge on snowmobile so it starts to get a little bit more difficult for giants and i feel like that mentality that lunar metal spoke about of trying to not give xavier fair fights the way you do that is you open up a lot of angles and you sit on crossfires and you just kind of wait for xavier to start pushing because you're gonna be covering the angles and that's just something a little bit more difficult to do with that ace band out yeah, I mean, I, I feel like the Giants don't have to wait too long to find themselves in engagements, right? <laughs> Especially in that first round. Well, two spawn peaks on Chalet? Like, who in their right mind would do that? If any team, Xavier, right? They, they love that kind of stuff. And um, I'm sure that throughout the rest of the uh, the matches, as we um, just uh, sit through this pause, they'll, they'll be swinging through the trees. Like, they just love playing super oh, yeah. aggressive Siege. And some people <laughs> might sit back in the chat and be like, oh, these guys are just, yeah, go back to ranked. But it, it's a mixture of their mechanical skill and their strats. It's not just the fact that they could win gunfights because against any decent team, if it was just gunfights, they wouldn't be in the APAC South League. Teams For like sure. Giants and stuff will punish that if it isn't thought out, at least in, in some level <laughs> by, the, by Xavier. For sure, like Xavier, the thing that, one thing that makes them a little bit extra special is the fact that they do have that insane mechanical skill, but that's not down. The other things that they are very good at, they've got good strats, they've clearly preps chalet strats, like we've been saying time and time. They're also totally open to doing unconventional strats. So something we've seen from them quite a bunch is the pulse shotgun, which is uh, quite funny and quite successful when Napier runs it. He's happy to go for that semi-auto, even though it's very unfavored for most people. And um, we've seen, you know, spawn peaks a lot. All kinds of things, but also they know when not to peek as well. They know how to support each other. They're always playing with two players together to maintain crossfires, etc. And I think that that's something that makes Xavier really successful despite being an aggressive centric team. And also, while we can harp on about their mechanical skill, you did see that flank from Onigiri where he missed the entire magazine of the UMP onto that stationary Yana who was facing the other way. <laughs> Well, oh, yeah, was... yeah. I mean, may maybe it was a miss. Maybe it was uh, other other factors outside yeah. of his control. Okay, we'll, I, we'll never know. We'll get. I, yeah. we'll, we'll just rag on him. It was it was a whiff. It was it was a whiff. But whatever. Um, Easy to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess we can talk about maybe what's the pass mark here, right? How many attacks should Giants be looking to, to take? I, I I am still of the impression that a four two is what you should be aiming for on Jale, but. As we often see with new maps, they tend to lean more into the defense. So maybe a 3-3 or even a 2-4 against them could still be all right for them. Yep, I agree. Look, I've, I do feel like Xavier are more at home on their defense compared to their attack. Um, I'm actually going to try and bring up the CGG Pro stuff so I can have a look. So three in the last three games, they've played their 50-50 attack and defense wins. So I'll try and make this a longer sample size. December, but since December 2018, let's let's go back to September the first to now, and let's have a look at what percentage of their attack and defense rounds that they have won. If you give me a second. The suspense minutes. is killing this, me, this, Dev. This thing, this thing does take <laughs> a second. No, okay, my internet ain't working. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. 
52% attacker and 47% defender. That's actually not what I was expecting. That's completely against what you said. So you just, you've been well, debated. There you go. There you go. I'm, I'm totally open to that. So it seems that Xavier has, at least since the August Major, a better win rate on their attacking side than on their defensive side. Maybe that actually means that when it does switch over to the attack, they're going to be even more comfortable, which would mean that Giants have really got to rack up some attack wins, at least a 4-2 half, to really solidify their chances in this game. Yeah, and we, and we talked about it. Is potentially first versus second in the league. I know I personally yeah. don't have Xavier second. I believe I have them third, just under the Knights. But this is a big matchup. Whoever wins this really positions themselves to try and finish at the top of the league. If they lose this, then questions start to be raised. Are they really a serious threat for that top position? Again, if you're just joining, keeping in mind, if you finish first at the end of stage one, you automatically qualify for the major. You don't have to go through the hard work of the playoffs. You are straight in there. So that is like a golden ticket that all of these teams are fighting for. First spot in the league of APAC North and APAC South is everything for these teams. And you want to talk about how close the game is. Last three times Giants and Xavier have played each other, it has been a 7-5 or an overtime. Historically, these teams are very closely matched. And usually Giants comes out on top, but Xavier is always a Jack massive a threat. And, and they're always bomb. coming in and bringing that heat that kind of makes Giants step back for a second and have to rest and recuperate before they can take their own blow. Well, of course, as you can see, we are back in the map now. This is not a replay of the previous round. Xavier have elected to re-attempt the same bomb site, bringing similar operators to the board. You can see that mirror placed above, I'd assume, in combination with castle barricades as well to try and slow the progression of the giant sweep. We saw last time the giants take control of Solarium and then slated that to control above the objective and found those picks. Didn't even need to go for the plant in the end. So I assume that their plan of pack might be very similar here as it looks like they spawned to the north side and Jordan straight away might be able to jump on that rappel and try and get some work done. And here comes the mirror window. DCH. He actually has a stack of one still in the pocket. He's going to go back downstairs to pop that one, I expect. Like, it's like we've talked about, this bomb site really does have a heavy reliance on that vertical play. As soon as you lose control of the top floor, uh, and you're not contesting it, it's just so easy for the attackers to open the floor and kill you anywhere near the bomb site. So that's why we have Xavier really having a presence up here at the moment. It's just the one player. But that mirror window does mean it's a bit more difficult for Giants to just safely go into office and start to open up that floor. Not much action so far. Angry X not under too much pressure inside of Solarium. The Giants still preparing their plan of attack. Lots of utility that they can utilize. Nine pitches and two nades. Those projectiles will prove quite dangerous to the Jaeger playing this position if the Giants time it right. They've got the crossfire over towards the double window as well, but no one's playing on the bathroom window, so if he wants to, he'll be able to retreat. And the Giants don't want that, they want their man. Ooh! Ooh! As DCH finds his, that's Jordan taking him down, who I believe was on the window. Yeah, I think he actually maybe even started he to repel in. in. Mm, that yeah. is a gnarly shot from Sapper on the receiving again, but now Speakeasy it's gone on fourth upstairs. It looks like that top is clear. Ysera suppress a little bit as he repels in. Still a little bit worried. He doesn't know where Angry X went. Previously, he was roaming upstairs. And well, the Gemini will go forth to look for a bit more information. Xavier fully Ooh. retreated. They've still got teeth, and that is the C4. Immediately traded, and wow, back and forth constantly. A 2v2 now. 45 seconds left, Luna and Speakeasy located by pick up the pieces. Xavier wasted a lot of time, but as I mentioned earlier, when you fall back to site, there is so much pressure that can be applied from the vert. You've got the hatches and soft floor. That's why the likes of Sapper are deciding to play off site. Napew, he's stuck though. He needs to try and play this part of the map, prevent the drop from the hatch and any Ooh. entries from Trophy. As a drone has spotted him out, the ping goes out as well. Luna and Speakeasy, they need to try and play off one another as Luna's dropped the hatch. He has the kit, and he's going to go for the oh, plan, no. but it gets denied. Speakeasy, where are you? He doesn't trade it back. 
and Sappa will finish the job as Napu finds that one on to speak the... Wow. That really crumbled apart there for the Giants. It felt like they had an inkling of hope, but Xavier shattered it. It goes to show that the way Xavier are playing this, their decision-making seemingly impeccable. A lot of teams would think, well, once you lose top floor and, and the attackers start to open up those angles through the floor and take down players, well, that's that's the end of it. But a couple of things put together meant that Xavier was completely favored. Firstly, the first player that fell for Giants was the Buck, and that is the primary player you want to be using to open up that floor and expose the defenders below. Secondly, even though Xavier had forfeited that top floor, they were still keeping up the fight with their C4s and found another kill through the floor as well. And thirdly, Xavier retained their man advantage by just keeping players retreating downstairs. And even though there were trades back and forth, a 2v2 with only a couple seconds left favors the defenders because the attackers have to force down that plant, effectively leaving it in a 1v2 for that second attacker who has to cover his buddy planting that diffuser. So, so well played there for Xavier. I gotta say, I'm quite surprised at the amount of play that objective has gotten and some of the success that's been highlighted. I feel like, for, for whatever reason, I'm drawing parallels between that objective and Penthouse on Coastline. It, I just don't see this objective being viable long term. It just feels, it, to me, there's so many weaknesses on this site that maybe aren't being exploited yet by these teams. Um, so maybe in the future, we'll just see this site never be played. But who knows? Maybe I'll be proven wrong. I'm happy to be proven wrong. I love seeing innovation on the defense and Xavier with some of that innovation, was able to, to get that round. Something I love to see is a little bit of... Xavier aggression. Basically copyrighted at this point. Hysterix may be victim of a jump out here. I know that Napu had a camera outside and was near that window. It had been two kicks so we could jump out at a moment's notice. Jordan barely survives that engagement. And Xavier running amok. And this must be really frustrating for the Giants. They like to play more structured Siege, but when you can't even get in the building and get things going without taking damage, that has to be tilting. Jordan now needs to be so careful for the rest of the round. Some nice flashes, they will push back angry. Yuzero follows that up with a nade. There's that structured Siege we love to see from the Giants. Perfectly methodical. And now, I believe for the first time, that's Giants with the man advantage. But Jordan is a hair's breadth away from falling himself. The Gemini goes on through, clearing out dining, kitchen, west main. Good info now, good control. Giants are going to utilize that, I believe, for some vertical play. My assumption, Jordan is going to come in with the skeleton key and start to displace these defenders from below by destroying the ceiling and making these defenders move around. But he needs to worry about his flanks in the meanwhile. I don't know whether Hysterics has put those air jabs down covering all of Hysterix's flanks, or rather Jordan's flanks. And even if Jordan was to open that floor, he's low HP, he might lose a gunfight through it. Yeah, that's exactly right, that's what I was going to say. The moment an angle gets opened, you just know that Xavier, instead of running away from it, are going to run towards it and try and find that pick, especially if their communication's good. Should have been caught out earlier that Jordan has taken a lot of damage and that he's one shot. So Xavier, with that intel, should be able to try and down him. They do, and now it should be a four on four. Nice little aggressive peak, ripping down the castle barricade for DCA. Doesn't commit, and that's fine. Ysera gets the revive on the Jordan. 45 seconds left, and Giants have made this a 5v3. DCH has this great angle onto the balcony, but he's worried about peaking it. Napu as well. The Xavier players are dropping like flies, and Giants have full control for this round. Five versus two, but they need to make this execute happen. 25 seconds left, and falling. Giants are just about ready for this execute as they start to push on through. It's an easy pinch. Napu is the last to fall. As Big Easy cleans ass to Xavier players. And Giants get back in the game. Great positioning there from the Giants late round. They had the crossfires established. They choked out Xavier. They had nowhere to move. They were trying to find picks desperately to bring that round back from the brink. But as you saw, the Giants, they gave them no breathing room. And in the end, they'll take the round, evening up that scoreline once again. These two have had a lot of close maps. Maybe this will be yet another. 
feel like it's not a Giants versus Xavier game unless if it goes to overtime or near enough. Keeping in mind that overtimes Attackers don't locate and give the winner as many points as they used to. Only three points, sorry, only two points instead of the three that you would get for an outright victory. Giants need to be mindful of that. If they drop even just the one point to Xavier here by going to overtime, it's still winning like 8-6 or 8-7. That's already some points that Giants are missing out on that other teams, for example, the Pittsburgh Knights, might be able to catch up to. Even if a team like you confirm might be a threat to Giants. If we look way back in the day, Q Confirm and Xavier were two very, very strong teams within the Southeast Asia Pro League, which Giants also played. And Giants were actually by no means the dominant force in SEA Pro League. They were the, 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 the household name. But Xavier and Q took quite a few of those Pro League championships away from Giants. Now that we're in Southeast, or rather South APAC, I think we might actually see a bit of a reprisal of that. Maybe. Been a, been a while since the C's Pro League days. I gotta say, that was definitely in the pre beard Gaza, right? Oh, I did. Yeah. Definitely some late nights <laughs> back in the day. Oh my. <laughs> Bring back the memories. <laughs> oh, wow. Anyway, let's direct our attention to round number five. Funny little room here from Napu playing the con downstairs. Maybe trying to find a cheeky pick. Action, meanwhile, though, I believe is going down towards the site as the Giants prepare for yet another Solarium push. It feels like this is just the trend at the moment. Every team wanting yeah. to take this side of the map. It's a stark contrast to matchmaking where teams try to take normally from the lobby side. Maybe the competitive teams just feel that's too risky in Solarium. It's just easy to flush out some of these positions. Yeah, agree. Like, totally in ranks every day. It seems like people are from top five players from library, etc. But I think... A lot of these pro teams have realized that that Solarium side of the map is actually a lot easier to execute on. And there's a lot less power positions for the defenders to play. Just while we've got a, a breath of... Uh, a moment to breathe, I want to draw your attention to the top right-hand corner of the screen. And the top left-hand corner of the screen, where you can see the attacker and defender utility. It's a new feature that's come with Crimson Heist. Hooray! Uh, and and for the, the first number, where it's number and then a, a vertical slash and then the second number, the first number is how much of that utility is deployed, and the second number is how much of that utility is left in the pocket. So, for example, there's one barbed wire in the pocket and two out in the field. I don't know why, but there you go. <laughs> it looks like some progression has been made by the Giants. He's zero. Inside of Scream. Nades are sent out. His flash play, which makes it a little bit awkward. As Onagiri pounces onto Lunar Metal. More damage done there. Back onto Xavier. As Onagiri is traded out. Jordan getting to work from below. He has the HP to do so on this occasion. As more frags continue to rain out, but it's trade after trade after trade. And Hysterics and Speakeasy are left in the two on three. 30 seconds to work with. Quite a play here from Hysterics. A lot of gusto pushing in from Piano. Angrex just holding down the line. Both of the Giants players are inside. Two Xavier's players on Solarium stairs, but they don't have the diffuser to Giants. Speakeasy finds another one. Two versus two. There's a C4. Says, see you later. Hysterics jumps down. It's a 1v1. For Napu, Xavier take it in the one versus one. And they take back the lead. Great work there from Xavier. They got the diffuser down and it was what won them the round. They could play off it, trade it out in the end. It was a little bit sketchy. Not too keen on the Valk peeking that so late into the round, but hey, it's Xavier. Like we said, they love to peek everything. That's natural to them and it works out. They now have a one round lead heading into the final round of the half and they'll try and extend that heading back down to Wine Cell. In fact, not back down because this is the first time we're going to see this site played. Crazy to think when this is the primary bomb site for a lot of teams in ranks, but it just goes <laughs> to show that as soon as a map is added to the comp pool, teams just go hard starting to develop it, and it does develop quite independent from what you see in high level ranks. And I think a lot of these comp teams are starting to realize that, well, Master overall is just a very good site. And some of these teams surprisingly are seeing a lot of value in Kitchen with some creative strategies. But most teams, I would have expected that after Master Office, it would be Snowmobile and Wine as the second 
bombsite choice uh, chosen, and even bar gaming, I think, is a pretty good bombsite. But here we go. We finally get to see this. And one of the big things for me here is the Giants. They've stopped bringing the Thermite. They only had it in the first two rounds before they switched onto the Hibana. So you look at the amount of hard breach available for Giants, especially on account of five seconds. Bark bringing stuns instead of that hard breach charge. It's really there's not a lot of hard breach available. Attackers so you can maybe get a line of sight or a crouch or vault hole on the snowmobile side, and then at best a line of sight on wine. You don't really have a lot to go around. Yeah, I guess on the contrary though, Xavier only have the mute to actually deny these charges on the walls, so they don't have a Kayid or for Bandit if they want to be a little bit more aggressive, just relying on Napu there. I don't think that's going to be too difficult to clear. All it takes is a couple of flashes through the drone hole and a nade, if there even is ADS devices on that wall, and then you've got it open. So, sure, it's limited in the amount of walls you can open, but I don't think it'll really stop the Giants from opening the walls that they probably wanted to anyway. We'll have to wait to play this out though, as Yazira takes control above alongside Jordan. So a map sweep in combination with that snowmobile wall. Pretty typical on this type of attack, as the Giants try and make sure everything's clear before they start working the site. Yeah, map sweep is a great thing to do on Chalet if the defenders are not contesting the roam. Being able to take complete map control is just so great. You can lock off those staircases, there's three of them, pretty easily with your air jabs or with some drones. And from that point forward, you can just completely open up all of the, the ceiling above the Stellar site, above Snowmobile. Oh, this is an aggressive position. Who's on the other side? Is that speakeasy? It, it was speakeasy, <laughs> says Onigiri as he swings, takes off his head with ease, critically. That is two of the explosives from Sophia gone. When there's still two Vulcan shields and two evil eyes remaining. And the scary stat here for Whoa. Giants as Jordan opens up that hole. As I was going to say, the scary stat is the team that gets the opening pick almost always wins the round. So based on that, Xavier should be able to clean this one up provided they don't give away a trizzy here. So they're in the box seat to try and take this oh. one. And Onagiri finds yet another. You zero down as well. This round is falling apart for the Giants. By attackers. Xavier just doing a great case study of why you don't need to roam on the basement chalet and still you can take a victory or at least it's looking that way. Ysera is so low on HP. This is a nice angle, but it's predictable on Akiri. How does he get away with that? Eventually punished, but it's just the OG APAC duo, the Luna Metal and Ysera to pick up the pieces. There's the Gon 6. Deals with that evil eye. Ysera tries to drone up, but that's muted. Desperately looking to peek this night skin on the G36, but it's going to have to be Luna going mental from this point forward, pushing on in. Not a large magazine. Xavier aren't giving him anything. The diffuser starts being planted, but Xavier found the last two players. A very, very solid round from the Thai team. On a Geary. He's so fun to watch. I still have flashbacks to the SI calls. Do you remember that run out he did on Cafe? It was like a 3K or a 4K. Like this man <laughs> is just absolutely cracked. He's a champ as well. So you just know he's good at the game. I think what a pleasure to watch. Is, I think Onagiri is one of the best ranked players in the world. What he, He's like champion seven or something, isn't he? Yeah, he's not quite yeah. at spoilt levels, but you know, he's all right. <laughs> he's all right. I think, I think if, if, if you were to give someone the title of Apex Sport, it would have to be Onagiri. Oh yeah, for sure. He is a ranked demon, and I'm very well. grateful to have never come up against him <laughs> in the ranked stack. Me too, me too. But I am glad yeah, that we're going to see Bar. That means we're going to see every can. single objective played on Chalet. How's that for a bit of fun? You were mentioning earlier, Dev, that you, you thought this might be a decent site, and a composition from the Giants here. I think they could formulate something very, very strong. I love this mirror inside of that back store. That position can't be cleared from above. The only way you clear that is directly on the mirror itself or from the wall to the east, where we saw those angles generated earlier towards the main stairs. So that could play a key role in how this round plays out. You can just hang around there, get full vision on that side and play plants at all. Then it's up to the rest of the team to hold the likes of Library above if they sub-elect or even horizontally here, which we're seeing hysterics set up a shield inside a kitchen. So 
Well, there's a, there's a lot going on right now, a lot to digest. <laughs> uh, and we'll have to see if Xavier can digest it quickly. They've got three minutes to try and clear it and win the round. Giants might win a lot of tricks up their sleeve, but Xavier are the team who always have an unorthodox response, and in this case, it's that Twitch I'm going to keep an eye on. Uh, not a super common way to counter the mirror, but incredibly effective if you can get that Twitch drone in there and pop the canister. Still has two Twitch drones remaining. Once Xavier identify where those mirror windows are, I expect to see that Twitch drone go hunting. Looks like a bit of a clear for now, looking to take the master side of the map for Xavier. <laughs> what is the Sterics doing? That, that ammo by do what? Oh, Wait, wait a second. Look at this. He's prone, hiding behind a shield and next to an alibi Prisma. Is he trying to bait someone to shoot the Prisma and is he going to actually like stand in it? Oh my god, I would love that. This is such a weird strat, but so it's aggressive. so cool. Yeah, but it, it's so far away from his side. I, I, I get the impression that Xavier should be able to ignore this, maybe. I guess he might want to take dining to try and shut down any rotations through fireplace, but if you get control of library and go for a games execute, I don't really see that being too critical. So, sure, it looks cool, but Hysterix needs to be careful that one, give away his life cheaply, and two, that he doesn't hang around for too long. If he knows that Xavier aren't going to push him, there's no point just staying here for the entire round. Giants seemingly spread thin, and Xavier are taking their time deciding what kind of a play they want to make. Angry X running out the site, starting to establish what kind of an execute is possible, if possible. But the rest is Dave at the moment just looking for a little bit of info, watching these passive angles. This is classic Xavier. Might look like they're not doing anything. They're just slowly figuring out what they want to do, but that clock will be their enemy if they waste too much more time. Name Pew to kick things off. Speak easy onto the XTH. Leaves it in a four on four. He's, he's in sight, but he doesn't have the kit, so there's not much he can do for now. He needs to wait for Sapper to come along and get that plant down. Where are the rest of these attackers? It feels like Xavier can <laughs> just all over shot right now. It's one over here, one over there, and one over there. I don't really know what's going on. Onagiri is not even in the objective yet as he bolts in. Shoots oh. that alibi in the air, but Hysterics he's longer towards library stairs. This is going to be a tough round for Xavier, but they still get it to a three on three. Another trade goes through. Luna Metal is the pivotal player here for Giants. He has so much good vision. That's Hysterics on the blue stairs, but traded. And now it's all on Angry X, the new player on Xavier against two. He does not have that diffuser, and he's going hunting. Might be able to find Luna Metal here, but it's too little, too late, and no diffuser in sight. Giants win the round on time. Yeah, that was a uh, an interesting round release from Xavier. They had a player in sight, but then they had the remaining three absolutely nowhere to be seen. You still had Onigiri outside when Hysterix was not even in that position anymore. Uh, the kit was just nowhere to be seen as well. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't really know what to say about that one. Not a great round from Xavier, if I'm being completely honest. But hey, they don't have to worry about that objective for a while, so they can forget about it. Xavier are the kind of team that they're not going to try and address what head on. They're going to try and subvert it somehow. And that's what they tried to do. And for Napier to get in sight and find a pick was great. But I think Giants reacted really well. Uh, they made sure that whatever Xavier pulled off, they would always have a trade for it. And it just meant that it came down to a 2v2 with just about no time left. And that's going to favor Giants in those strong anchor positions. Here we go. Into the next defense. Deep are the four Giants. Keep in mind, this was a 3-3 half. I don't know about you guys. I'm pretty torn as to who that 3-3 half might favor. 3-3 three, three or 3-2? Three, oh, or, sorry, it was a 4-2 half, four wasn't two. it? Yeah. I'm, I'm clueless. They definitely know who that favors. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you would think it would favor Xavier, being in the lead. But the yeah, question is, can they hold on to that lead, right? Because they've already lost one round, so it's already started to get pretty narrow for all them. And that, that attack doesn't fill me with a whole lot of hope for this next round. I hope to see things be a little bit cleaner. Otherwise, then I'll be really worried. If there's two rounds in a row where they look disjointed, then it starts to look a little bit concerning. Oh my god, is Hysterix doing my Ella strat? Nah, uh, I don't think these, anyone would do your Ella strat. Pretty it's not that good. This is pretty close to my rank strat. Uh, just I don't just know putting about it that. out there. Uh, the Ella F12 shotgun. 
I think, so the, the problem with playing this, I, I've done this quite a bunch in ranked, playing this position, it sucks, man. It's so hard if a team dedicates to pushing you, even if you have concussions on the stairs behind you and in the little, the box room of library, uh, you're also exposed to that window on the north side. So unless if you have a teammate somehow pressuring that window, say from piano, it can be really hard to stay alive here. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. And the other thing is, like, if someone just jumps in from, from the, the east balcony onto the mezzanine, they can also get an angle onto you if they look hard enough. So you're really limited in your mobility here, especially with that shotgun. So hysterics is in a very dangerous position and it's up to save you to punish that. You mentioned earlier that Xavier might not take these setups head on though. So we may not even see them play this side of the map. That's a pretty aggressive mirror as well here from the Giants. Luna not shying away from those and that's going to make any library entry incredibly tough. So I think it's probably wise that Xavier try and push from Stellarium here. And I expect the Giants would be ready for that. I mean, they're attack very Stellarium centric. So you'd hope they have that side of the map down pat. Something you'd love to see is Super Onigiri back on the Finker, one of the trademark APAC strategies and Thai strategies that we like to see. This LMG is a powerhouse. When you click that button, that go button on Finker's wrist, everything just breaks loose. I'll keep a keen eye on Onigiri in the late round when that execute comes through. At the moment, Xavier once again quite spread out. Looking to figure out what their options are. A player pushing on Mezzanine. They see that Ysera is playing in top fireplace. And wondering whether Pew can find an angle onto him through the floor. He needs to be extra Ooh. careful. There are oh. so many ways he might fall. Angry X finds it. That go button is hit. And it turns Xavier on. A 5v3 with not a lick of damage done across the board. That is complete control of Library. Only 30 seconds to work with though, getting that wall open will be tricky if they could desire, but they might just send it straight in. The left oh. side has been opened on a gear with the LMG. He's going huge. Oh my word, Luna Metal oh. is taken down. A lot sides so easy. It's a flawless round for Xavier. Finka is just an absolute machine in the hands of Onagiri. Simple as that. Xavier are the kings of unorthodox. That was monstrous. A lot of people would sit there and say, what is Xavier doing? There's one player out reading. There's one player downstairs. There are two players on the balcony. They're all over the place. They're not supporting each other. Well, mate, you'd be wrong. Xavier might be on opposite sides of the map, but they are in sync like clockwork. And as soon as they hit that go button, man, do they turn it up. They pushed on everyone at the same time, making a move and overwhelm the Giants, translating that into a flawless round. Insane. Yeah, I don't even know how you counter that. I mean, it really comes down to the Giants being really switched on and hitting refrags, which unfortunately on that occasion they weren't. Because I mean, there's not really a hard counter to the Finker. I guess you can make the argument that um, smoke is because it increases the damage output, I believe, unless that was changed. I don't yeah, think no, it was, though. Still, still thing. Um, and then I guess you've got the likes of maybe the Malusi and other forms of uh, crowd control, but Malusi was taken off the board. And Xavier, they're playing into that. It's important that when you ban an operator, you actually play into that, which they are. They probably wouldn't have been able to do that with the Malusi because it would have halted them. So it looks a little bit silly, but deep down, that's actually super smart from Xavier. Love to see it. Finker, I think, I'm not sure if Finker has an effect on Ella Mines. I think it does. I know that Finker will reduce the amount of time that you're flashed for. I think it yep. also gives you some resistance to the concussion effects from Ella as well. I'm not 100% on that one. You walk through barbed wire faster, you walk through banshees faster, as you said. Um, Finker is the, the queen of micro buffs. She just <laughs> gives you a little bit of help in a thousand different ways. You can't possibly remember all of them. And sometimes that translates into a victory. Here's an engagement. Napew versus Hysterics. In oh, he's games. droning. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh he won is it. that? How? Napew turns it up. <laughs> and straight on the back of that, the Finker boost comes through. That's got to be a tilter for Hysterics. He heard the sound cue. He knew he was droning. He swung around the corner, saw that his head was down. Next minute, bang, you're dead. Uh, has got to be frustrating and it puts Giants at the man disadvantage. Keeping in mind, Dev, 
Xavier a round away from match point against arguably the strongest team in this league as we stand today. This is pretty crazy from the Thai team. In fact, Xavier win this round. They already locked themselves in for one point in the map. And as well, if they can win the, the whole damn thing, then that's even better. The Giants' first map in APAC South League, and it's certainly no cakewalk. Oh. Lovely shot there from Onigiri. <laughs> Shuts down Jordan. That doesn't feel right. That does not feel right. Oh. That is the second head on this three-headed Hydra of Giants' entry. Taken down. Xavier are picking them to pieces. It's just a matter of time before the execute comes through. Xavier have almost all the map control that they want. Another! Ysera goes down, and the final head on this Hydra is Speakeasy upstairs. No support. Xavier a 5v2. Luna's playing on library stairs. What can he do? The answer... What? is maybe something, <laughs> but it's nothing in the end. Napu with the double, and it's Speakeasy up above to try and clutch this round out. Probably one of the oh, more no. challenging clutches of his career as he takes a little bit of damage. Napu, he's just spamming the crouch, spamming <laughs> the lean, and he'll find the kill with the finger boost as well. Xavier with a flawless round to earn themselves a match point. Insane! That's what that is. I can't believe that Xavier are just running away with this. Two rounds in a row, flawless. Napu turned it up, godlike. Onigiri had a massive performance. And here we are, 6-3. And we could well see Giants and Wildcard both lose their first games here in Ooh. APAC South, who I thought were potentially the top two teams in all of APAC. But Xavier... And in fact, both of the Thai teams are here to make a message. Wow. I think it's important to remember just how dominant the Giants were in APAC North last year. Their win rate was absolutely huge. I think if you worked out the numbers, it would have been about 90 plus, Dev, I think. 90% plus. If you count like regular season APAC North games, it would have been something incredible. Way they were probably yeah. they were huge. Can, like their can... only real trouble they had was against Cloud Nine, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, looking at the last 22 games, so that's everything, including the August Major Grand Final. The only times they've lost was one, two, uh, three, four, five maps to Cloud Nine, one map to Xavier, and one map to Cyclops. And everybody else, they they steamrolled. Yeah. Uh, I think Giants lost one game to Fab in stage two, or is it stage one? I can't remember. I feel like they lost one extra game in there somewhere. But to certainly, I wouldn't go so far as to say unprecedented, but it's incredibly impressive yeah. for Xavier because then Giants playing poorly. This is Xavier <laughs> doing Xavier things. Like this is not some kind of revolutionary new way of playing the game. This is just the Xavier playstyle. They've always been like this, they always will be, and they will keep taking names. I mean, that's the thing. They lose one round, and Onigiri goes, Hey boys, I'm jumping off the sledge. I'm going to jump on the finger and do my bit. He's been fighting kills and giving buffs to his teammates. Some would say that some of those buffs, like the recoil, can be a little bit annoying, but no, not for Xavier. Has he sussed into this? They practice this. They know what they're doing. They'll be looking to find that opening pick once again. That trend has continued. Every round so far has been won by the team that gets the opening pick. So this is critical. The Giants, they're trying to stop Xavier from getting anywhere near the map. Whereas Xavier on the attack, they're trying to find that coveted first kill. Xavier always been the Giants' as kryptonite. But I certainly didn't expect this in the opening game of the season. One round away, what can Giants do to stop this? Speakeasy, already taken so much damage. We're seeing this nice little setup to hold top fireplace and library. But Sap has info thus far. Oh no. DCH finally gets that first pick once again. As I said, that's huge for Xavier. They're in the box position to take the round, take the map and earn three points in the first match of APAC South League 2021 as Onigiri finds another. It's all going downhill here for the Giants. It's been a tough as Luna's now taking damage as well. It's all compiling. 
into one hell of a bad storm for them. They need to try and hold on, dig deep in this round, find something out of nothing. Sarah desperately wrangling the Scorpion recoil. Some information on a player over near Kitchen, pinged out by that Prisma. Just three players left for Giants, holding on. Xavier biding their time. Players all over the map. They've got that information. 30 seconds remain. Xavier starts to push on forward. Still a little bit of time to engage this vertical play, but 20 seconds left. They better get a move on. That mirror is going to make things very oh. difficult. Can he win the fight oh. through the floor? He oh, does. It's all on Lunar Metal. 13 seconds left. And Xavier slay the Giants in Apex out. They did it. Xavier have brought Thai Siege to the forefront of APAC. They did things we'd never expect if you come from another region, but hey, welcome to APAC. We expect this on the daily, 7-3 in the end. Almost lost the words in how dominant that performance really was, and Xavier, I mean, maybe it's maybe it's a little bit early to say this, but I reckon they might be a really strong team on Charlie heading into the future. Definitely seems to suit their aggressive playstyle. What a performance from the most unique team in APAC and potentially the world, Xavier. They have a special magic about them. That play style, they play Siege like nobody else and they make it work even at the highest level. What a performance and what a good day to be a Thai, well, uh, Thailand fan of Rainbow Six because we have two Thailand teams winning their initial games. I'm blown away. Yeah, I am just <laughs> speechless. I just cannot believe how dominant that was from Xavier. Um, incredible. I think that the Giants have probably been caught off guard a little bit by this matchup, and they're going to have to go back to the drawing board, especially on Shelley, because I don't think Xavier are going to be the only team to be super aggressive like this. So they need to watch their backs, because now they have a real target on it. Absolutely. Uh, Xavier are uh, apparently the team to beat now, because Giants were the team to beat until they were beaten. And of course it is Xavier who does it. Now, just I'm gonna reiterate that point. It is Wildcard and Giants on the same play day taken down by the Thailand teams. What a fantastic day. What a fantastic opening for Apex South. I'm riled up now. I'm the, the biggest Giants fan there is out there. In fact, I like I I even have my Giants jersey here just in case I needed it for anything. But man, I think I can throw that away because oh. today is a day for Thailand Siege and Xavier, oh man, they just popped off. Jeez, you're jumping jumping ship a little bit early on that one, Pete. I don't think it's all doom and gloom for the Giants just yet. I think they just got bettered by a team that was stronger on Chalet. Um, I think the Giants will fare better against some of the more structured teams from OC and that will give us a better indication of whether or not they are out of form or not. Um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see for the rest of the stage to play out. Absolutely. Now, well, I still can't believe it. That is the final game, though, of the day. I'm sure our analysts have a lot to say about it. We'll get to them in just a minute. But, I mean, what could we take away from this if you're if you're on the Giants roster right now? What do you, where do you start looking at that game, guys? Uh, ban Finca when you play Xavier. <laughs> that, would be, that would be my one and only tip. <laughs> Yeah, well, we'll see whether that works out for them in the future. My God, what a game. Uh, constantly, constantly uh, on the edge of our seat. But here we go over to the analyst desk. We'll see you guys on the next play day. Over to you guys. Constantly, constantly on the edge of our seat. Perfectly summed up. What a win. What a save here. Slay the Giants in the best matchup between them in this season. Uh, boys, are we shocked? Are we surprised? Are we lost for words, Raven? Uh, I would say I lost for words. I mean, I always felt like this was going to be a really close, tough matchup between these two teams. We we're talking at the start of the series that maybe these two teams would be the top two in APAC South for the stage. What I'm probably most shocked about is that it was a 7-3. Like, it was quite a dominant performance mm. in the end from Xavier, and nothing stamps that dominance like the fact that they got three flawless rounds to end up closing that match out. Crazy. Look, not shocked at all. Not uh, shocked at all. Predictions to a point. We called it before going in on a very serious note because having a bit of fun right now. 
Xavier were just on another level on Chalet, and we said it before, right before we went into game, that map was going to be something that lent into their play style, that allowed them to kind of, you know, take the uh, take the collar off and, and run freely around the park, and that's exactly what they did. And I, I think that Giants, uh, uh, in a way, are going to be very tilted by that. Mm. Uh, for those who maybe missed the pre-show, of course, we laid out our predictions at the start of the night and inside Rob is very much gloating and glowing. He is four of four tonight. Can you believe it? I personally can't. It's, it's a travesty. Uh, Raven, though, I guess that says a lot about this region. It's going to be a wild ride. It's going to be bumpy and it's going to be so much fun this season if tonight's anything to go by. Yeah, look, I'm really excited about Apex South now. After seeing some of the results tonight, it shows that there is going to be some surprises. And on top of that, it's not just the fact it's new season, new year. We've had a lot of changes in Siege since you know, the last mm -hmm. stage, last competitive version of Siege. Crimson Heist just dropping this week already brought you know, a wealth of changes that have impacted the game already. But I think as this stage goes on, you know, as teams practice Chalet more and they get more experience in that, as well as they get used to some of these changes that have happened, I think for sure we're going to see some surprise results. <laughs> Surprise results. Xenox, you don't give this five head enough enough credit on these calls. We are definitely going to preface all of this conversation by saying this is going to be a wild season. Mm. Ravens just said it then. I think we've been talking about it throughout the entirety of this show today. There have been a lot of change ups and a lot of shake ups in the way that things are going right now. And I think, you know, Chalet coming in. Uh, as a new map has obviously brought forth an ungodly amount of uh, maybe panic for some of the more structured teams, which I'm very, very curious to see how it plays out. But we were talking veto processes. It's a best of mm -hmm. one. This is really going to come down to which team is is from the start making the right bands as we get into the uh, you know that seventh pick. Yeah, that's very much uh, completely true. Thought. I can't believe I'm agreeing with you, but hey, here we are at the end of the night. Anything can happen, I guess. But Raven, you know, it's a good point that Rob does bring up. You know, the map veto process means it's very unlikely that these teams are going to be playing on a map where they're, you know, not too uncomfortable. But yeah, it really shouldn't work out that way. You know, you have a BO1 veto process, you're banning out six of the seven maps, you get a say in three of those. You really should, at this level, you know, have enough maps prepped where a map that you're uncomfortable on should never get through. Yep. You should never be, be duped that hard where a map that you don't want to play is somehow the map to play. So, yeah, I don't think that's likely to happen often, but that's the great thing about Chalet being a new map included, is you don't really know whether you're going to be comfortable in that or not. Like, you might feel like you've practiced enough, mm. but maybe the other team has practiced harder. Maybe, you know, tonight, for example, maybe Giants have played a lot of Chalet leading into Apex South, but hey, Xavier have too and they were really confident in their performance in Chalet. Rob, any final thoughts there before we move on? Look, I think uh, you go back to the banning phase uh, just to, to finish on that point, because obviously it's a, it's a good trend to finish on. I think Giants left themselves wide open. They left Cafe and Chalet in until the last second, and I just don't think that that's, uh, either of those maps were uh, in favor of Giants, you just look at the the stats for Cafe, and it's uh, very clearly a, a good map for Xavier. So, you know, mm. I think just uh, just being a little bit smarter as we head into these best of ones, putting the pressure back on the other team rather than trying to play into their strengths. Well, that's going to be the uh, final thoughts, I guess, for that match, which means we wrap up our match against Giants and Xavier. And we move on to our recap of the day. All of the results are in, some surprising, some probably as we expected. Starting, I guess, from the top, though, Raven, 7th Heaven with a nice 7-3 over Order, kick-started today's wild ride. It did, and look, it was a dominant start for the Southeast Asian team, 7th Heaven, really trying to make a name for themselves after almost being relegated last season at APAC North. It was a great showing on Clubhouse, and it's made me all that more excited about their season ahead. <clears throat> Rob, Rob. 
Man, what do you? What, I mean, do you want me to, to back up that? I, I just think what, that you this can, is a... You can talk about the next matchup, Knights no, versus Alivate. You know what? You know what? Then... I want to talk about the order matchup. I think that order, that's a very, very disappointing start from them. Uh, Clubhouse, not a, not a good map for them either uh, in terms of the entire pool. So I think they let themselves down there. But obviously, it is just the first play day. There are plenty more to come, and, and they just need to brush that off. But I think the, the Knights Elevate game, that was pretty much what we expected from the get-go. Knights are well and truly, uh, I think we can clearly say after today, going to be, if not the best team in Oceania right now. And so a result 7-4 against Elevate. Uh, on the new map, the first time we've seen it uh, in this at this level, I, I think that that was pretty much the, what we expected to see. And Elevate just are going to have a lot of work to do as we head into these play days. Yeah, obviously both of those two teams, Knights and Elevate, yet to be tested against the SCA teams, but there's plenty more play days to come for that. Uh, and then to sort of close it out, Wildcard Q confirm, man, wh what a game that was. Q confirm. Definitely putting Wildcard to shame. 7 to an absolute belting. Diesel, uh, you know, that's going to be a talking point. And then, but healthcare is a talking point. So that kind of cancels it out. I mean, Q confirmed we're just too good, too solid in the end in that matchup. Let's recap our predictions, though. I think this is something that Rob's right. definitely going to want to have a look Juicy. at. Three and one. Everyone else is one and three. And then Guz, who's usually the king of the predictions. Two and two. Not bad. I think you would take that on a night like tonight. Raven, I'll go to you first because I'm sure Manic's going to take a while here. Gloating. <laughs> one, three. What happened? How are we so wrong? Yeah, look a bit bamboozled. Uh, it was probably too much faith in Ose. I don't know. Um, it's always hard doing play day one, you know, like especially at the start of the season. It's something I was saying earlier. It's not just skipping between stages or moving between stages where maybe there's been increments of changes at the start of the year. You know, we've had some format changes. There was the meta changes we've previously talked about, that pool changes. You know, there's a lot that happens. So it can be really tough. And also there's been a long off season. So these teams have been able to practice pretty significantly. Some affected by roster changes more than others. It does really change things up a lot. Um, not trying to make excuses, but definitely makes play day one pretty hard to predict, which is why I think Manic managed to get three out of one. I think he just... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> listen to him, thinking that it's all just the flip of a coin. This is all calculated. This is all methodical. I think when you look back at it, uh, very easy to, to see the uh, the Knights, you know, that was uh, a clear consensus. Order, disappointing that we weren't able to get that one across the line. I do think that uh, the, the Q Confirm game is, is always going to be one that we can kind of talk about. Uh, you know, like you're saying, two uh, really of the best players on either, well, one of the best players on either team have been taken out and replaced. So that was always going to be a really hard game to call. But I think the difference between Dark and, and Silex in terms of competitive play, it's just, it's chalk and cheese, I think, uh, when you're talking about mechanics. So, you know, yeah. it just is what it is. And when you've got a five head like me, I don't know, what do you expect? I'll complain about that. I know you, you touched on the wildcard Q confirm game, and that was the one that definitely caused the most issues amongst us. I know I changed last second. <laughs> Guys, I think, changed last second as well. But we were flip-flopping all afternoon on that one, especially. Uh, so that was the big one for me. I feel like if I had it just kept my pick, still beating myself up about it, but it is what it is. We move on, of course. Um, you know, I, I guess in a way, though, it's exciting that it wasn't so predictable, Raven. If it had have just been as easy as us all getting four zeros, well, that would have been a little bit sour. Yeah, you never like a day or a play day that just goes as expected, right? Like, well, yeah, it's cool to win things and to be right. I am personally one that loves to see different results or unexpected results and see players that don't pop off normally uh, go absolutely large. You know, it's always exciting to see those kinds of stories, underdog stories, however you want to call it. Um, I'd love to see that. So I hope we see a lot more of that in Apex South. I honestly think we will after tonight. Mm. It's really going to be, I think, a bit of a shake-up to the standings. Hmm. I would, uh, I, I'd back that to the hills. I think people need to be careful about sleeping on 7th Heaven and Order. I think Order are going to have a huge point to prove, and 7th Heaven have just shown us that if you give them an inch, they'll run a mile. Well, we're going to uh, run over to the schedule for next week's matches. 
as we go and dissect this i am already wondering how i'm gonna tip to be honest to try and claim back a bit of ground especially against you rob i'll give it to you <laughs> tip of my hat uh looking at these matches i'll do a quick little brief and then we can i guess discuss it slightly uh, elevate versus seventh heaven and we got qc versus knights order versus giants i mean uh, i mean rob you talked about order that's a tough one to try and bounce back and then xavier versus wildcard is also a tough one for wildcard to bounce back Raven, how do you view it? Look, looking at this after the way night, tonight panned out, I'm really excited for QC versus Knights. I think that mm. is going to be a really solid matchup. The Knights looked great against Elevate, and QC obviously looked great against Wildcard. So to have those two against each other next week will be a really great benchmark, a good test of where both those teams are actually at. In particular, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing the Knights, you know, an O's team go up against the Southeast Asian team in QC given mm. that we're, we're kind of banking a lot on the Knights this stage to be the, you know, the best coming out of ANZ. Mm. So I think, yeah, that's the one I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, I think 7th Heaven and Elevate, uh, it, that's the, I'll, I'll be honest, that's the big one for me next week outside of, uh, you know, Q Confirm and Knights. That one is in the back pocket already. I'm keen for that. But 7th Heaven, they have to be able to back up their performance against Order this week. They definitely mm. need to be turning up. And for Elevate, you know, we're putting them in the same boat as 7th Heaven at this point. You know, they could well be sitting in 6th to 8th place. They have to be hitting this ground running. They cannot allow a game where it's a 50-50 to, to fall by the wayside. Those points are incredibly important. I do feel as if, though, if tonight a lot of us did vote for the OCE teams, next week there's some underdogs there, and that's generally how the Australians like it. Order Wildcard will be underdogs in those matchups, so it's going to be tantalizing. Let's go and though, look at the standings as it is all now played out from play day number one, and it's Q confirmed in spot number one. Seventh Heaven, not in seventh they're in second of course though raven we've only played one <laughs> night so it's all threes yeah. and it's all zeros yeah that's the thing is it's just one play day but you know all the points are important so these teams at the bottom four elevate giants order wild card you know these elves can come back to bite you at the end mm. of the stage really every points matter and we talked about it a bit tonight overtime at least gets you one point now so fighting to at least get to the six can be very valuable, especially again, you know, in that late stage, one point could be the difference if you're making playoffs or making that first position. Hmm. I think, you know, the the point, uh, game wins, game losses, draws, they're all really important. The big thing that stands out to me tonight is how vastly different the results were in terms of how close we thought they were going to be. You know, like if you look at what the points are, won versus lost, uh, in terms of round win and loss, it is huge. That is a really big talking point for me and, and something that I think a lot of teams need to be quite cautious of because that right there can be the determining factor between a top four, top two placing and potentially even fighting out a relegation. Should just confirm as well there that the standings are correct. A Q confirmed though with a, a five plus map differential, of course, in their 7 2 victory over Wildcard. So they definitely are in that top spot uh, to close out play day number one, which for some might be surprising, others maybe not so much. I think more than anything, as you said, Rob, and as you sort of alluded to, it's the score lines, it's the, the one sided nature of tonight definitely caught me by surprise i did kind of expect we would see some wacky results but maybe the score lines i thought could be closer at some point in the season though of course we're going to get some ot's and some and some absolute classic matches but uh that's obviously to come in the future as we close out tonight's games of course we've all wrapped up for the night let's get some final thoughts uh, along the virtual desk i'll start with you rob because usually you're second, this time you're first. <laughs> That's what happens when you get your tips right. You get to go first. <laughs> we'll shut Raven out of this one. No, look, <laughs> uh, incredible first night uh, of, of APAC South. And I, I think I would speak for all of us talent when I say that this is an incredible opportunity for us and, and we do not take this with a grain of salt. You know, this is such, a, such an incredible chance for us to get to work uh, with the community and, of course, with these teams. So there's plenty more to come, ladies and gents. Yeah, Apex South looking like it's going to be a very exciting year ahead. On top of that, you know, these South Southeast Asian teams made some big statements tonight. And the Thai mm. teams in particular, Xavier, Q Confirm, looking really strong again this year. Q Confirm, they didn't quite end last year how they would like. So really good for them to get a 7-2 victory against Wildcard. 
great way to start. I think look out for the tight team. <laughs> yes, definitely. Well, APAC South is shaping up to be a very exciting region. Of course, it's not the only region in APAC, this glorious region. APAC North will be starting tomorrow for their first play day. So make sure you tune in tomorrow for that one, especially. But from us on the South side of things, we bid you farewell. Yeah.